About four months ago, I posted a video to YouTube about this wild new gambit you can play against the Sicilian defense called the Beaver Gambit. And since that time, I've been wondering to myself, is it actually possible to apply the principles of this gambit to other variations within the Sicilian? And this is what we are going to explore now in a three-part series, that's right, a Beaver trilogy, if you will, of videos, starting with this video here, video number one, which is going to go through some of the theory of this new other beaver gambit, and then we're going to be taking a look at some really, really wild stuff. So this video is going to be kind of uh, what you need before you can have fun, and then the next two videos are just going to be a bunch of dessert. Part two will feature this really crazy double piece sacrifice. You didn't do this on purpose, did you? This is the Space is Great Gambit? Oh, the double gambit! Oh... The space is great double gambit. Oh, wait. Oh, no, wait. Oh, no. This is interesting? Oh, no. Part three will feature one of the craziest pawn structures that you've ever seen in the game of chess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at this pawn structure. Look at this. Where else are you going to find this pawn structure? And then a double pawn gambit that you can play with the white pieces. And and an extra healthy dose of humiliation because I may have just remembered why I haven't posted this video in over four months. It's possible that I spent three full days creating a five second gimmick that totally failed live on Twitch. But before we can get into any of that and see what happens in part three, we gotta jump right now to the theory and get all caught up on what the beaver gambit is. So apologies in advance if there's any noise coming from directly above me. It sounds like the Schrantz kids are having a blast today. They're running around up there having a really fun time. And hopefully we get to have a really fun time exploring this brand new weapon against the Sicilian. But before we can deep dive into this new beaver gambit, I actually want to take a moment to talk about the original beaver gambit, which occurred after e4, c5, knight f3. And here, the original idea was to play something kind of special and creative against e6 Sicilians, where black is probably hoping either for like a con or a Taimon off, one of these kinds of positions. But I've been playing pawn to c3, off with the obvious idea, I just want to play pawn to d4. And black will need to respond to this with either d5 or knight to f6. These are kind of the critical ways of challenging our center um, before we have time to continue to build with d4. And in particular, black should spend some time attacking our e-pawn. And I do have some weapons in mind if they do play pawn to d5, but this will have to wait for, for a moment, because we are going to be focused on knight to f6, where after e5, knight to d5, here comes the beaver gambit, pawn to b4. And this kind of embodies like the wing gambit it has this idea that we are going to be giving away a b pawn in order to establish a firm center so we sack the b pawn we followed up with c4 and play pawn to d4 and for whatever reason this has been scoring me a ton of points there's just one really kind of easy trap in this opening and uh, i guess four of uh, the last five title players I've actually played have fallen for this. So basically, a lot of really strong players just go directly for knight to b6, which is the wrong square. The knight needs to go to c7. And this has all been previously explored. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to see the original video with a lot more analysis. But essentially, you play d4, and whatever black plays, d6, d5, literally doesn't matter. Either way, we're going to take. And if they take back with the bishop or the queen, doesn't matter. Uh, we hit them with this fork right away. And for whatever reason, I don't know the psychology behind it, but a lot of really strong players, they just, they kind of blunder into this and white gets a winning position directly out of the opening. So of course there's more to this and I encourage you to go check out that video um, at some point. But it had me wondering, can we actually play this against other Sicilians? And in particular, against players that play knight to c6. What if here we play the same exact idea? And here, knight to c6, maybe the opponent is looking for like a classical Sicilian, maybe a Sveshnikov, one of these kinds. But what if we play exactly the same way? Uh, c3, and then again, of course, d5 is a, a very normal uh, move for black that might get some coverage at some point. We got some crazy ideas. But for now, knight to f6, if this is met with e5, knight d5, b4, what exactly is going on here? 
And uh, this was kind of something that got me intrigued. And I actually played one of these streams where I, I test these brand new ideas against my viewers. So the way this three-part series is basically going to work is I'm going to show you a little bit of the theory. This one is just going to be kind of a, a theoretical video. Then I'm going to show you a game that I played against an actual viewer on Twitch where we actually played quite a lot of theory. And by theory, what I really mean is since there's, there's basically no games in the database, uh, theory is just kind of following the the main lines generated by the chess engines. So, but what is the, what's going on here? After they capture, we play pawn to c4. And here there is uh, sort of a, an improved idea for black. So for our opponents, they can now very safely go back to b6. And the idea is, well, we quite simply don't have this fork trick in the position. They can play d6, they can play d5, uh, whatever. And now suddenly... There's no longer this fork trick. But before we actually go into it, I guess you could say this is the main line. It is worth pointing out that opponents could still decide to put the knight back on c7. It looks a bit constricting. It is much rarer. Um, I think it's actually possibly been played one time. Um, and uh, you're not going to face it all too often, but I think it's just kind of interesting to get some ideas from the computer as to how it would play this position. Now, obviously, this uh, this gambit in particular, we got, <laughs> we got kids uh, <laughs> making some noise up there. This gambit in particular is uh, it's a little bit dubious, right? Because you, you sacrifice a pawn. But we get this entire center, and this gives us opportunities on all different sides of the board. So in this position, um, just to explore a little bit, black could again uh, try to challenge our center, because if, if black really does nothing, we might be just kind of threatening to blow him out of the water, destroy him in the center right away. But after d6 or d5, literally doesn't matter. We are going to be playing the, the same exact style and capturing here. Uh, the computer has a very clear preference as to how black should recapture. The, the one game in the database starts with queen takes d6, so I want to explore it, and then we will come back and look at kind of the computer-suggested um, e takes. But just to get kind of an idea of what a position might look like if they take back with their queen. Um, here we can already, we can see things that are starting to get outlined. White actually has a really tricky move. I mean, it's simple, I guess, if you see the idea. But one move we would like to play here with the white pieces is d5. We want to just kind of run this knight off the board. But if we just play d5, uh, you know, there's just simply going to be knight to e5 and black really shouldn't have any problems. So there is already a very cunning move. There's bishop to b2, uh, just sort of insisting that maybe I will play d5 next, and you could get yourself into a little bit of trouble. Now, the one human game has gone uh, bishop to g4, which is potentially already a little bit of a mistake that leads to a very difficult position for black to play. If you were a computer, you would just simply play pawn to e6, and uh, the line goes as follows. Uh, we would just simply develop our stuff, we will be down a pawn. We'll get kind of one of these structures where both sides will get castled. White has more space in the center. And uh, actually gives white a very small advantage in a position like this. So we do have a lot of uh, potential to go for some sort of kingside attack. And we're just kind of chilling. And the real issue for black is if you just kind of take a look at the pieces like this. Um, they just don't really belong where they are. So black still has some issues to solve. White has no issues other than the fact that you're down a pawn. Which you could call this a very serious issue. Um, but the position otherwise is looking very nice and so nice that the computer even thinks this is a little bit better for white. But uh, the one game that was seen um, from this position went bishop to g4. And here in this position, we saw d5. This was kind of the idea. Um, white decided to take, attacking the queen, and only then playing knight to e5. And here in the game... White played queen to e3, which is probably fine. There's a lot of queen moves that uh, are potentially nice. But the computer comes up with a really nice plan here that I think gives you just a very, very nice position. And it's not so easy to see, but queen to e2 is actually a super powerful move that forces black to find um, essentially an only move that's very unlikely to be played in this position. And uh, part of the problem is if this knight moves... If it goes back, which we'll, we'll actually take a brief look at, uh, suddenly our bishop becomes a lot stronger, taking a look at this g-pawn. And this guy is actually going to be really strong if we can put him over here on g2. So it's because of this. The computer says you have to play f6, and black is hanging in there. Um, I don't think he's having a good time, but he's hanging in there if you play f6. 
But knight to g6, I think you can assume it might be a very normal, reasonable human move. But the problem is, we are going to be putting this bishop on g2, so the queen actually will make a ton of sense on e2. Currently, she's blocking in our bishop, but that's it's not such a big deal. And we're going to get castled, and this knight might actually be coming to e5. Uh, e4, sorry. And the bigger problem, though, is what exactly is black going to do? It's never going to be easy to play e6 and develop this bishop without hanging a pawn. Uh, and you might run into a little bit of an attack if you do decide to go on the queen's side. So, for example, um, I think we can just kind of take a quick look at a computer line, which is knight to d2. And by the way, this is something like plus two already. This is like basically winning for white. e6 won't really threaten anything. g3. If black does decide to castle, I mean, you can imagine it's it's not so easy to move this bishop out and do anything else. Um, castles, bishop to g2. We will uh, basically pretty soon be able to play either knight to e4. We'll be able to get castled. And I don't know. I, I don't I don't look at this king and think he's going to be the, the safest guy in the long run. And there's some computer analysis that kind of goes off the walls. But essentially, you will get a, a very good, pleasant position where... Black's king is never going to be as safe as the white king, and this bishop is going to, for the rest of the game, have a hard time developing. So I think we can just kind of conclude the analysis here, because <laughs> the computer moves get a little bit wacky after that. But I thought this was kind of a cool idea um, from the white point of view. And it's a very easy, simple setup, basically, if you can play g3, bishop g2, knight d2, get castled, uh, you get a good position. But all right. Uh, knight c7 is going to be a much rarer option. You're not going to face this one all too much. So one more time, just to remind you how we got here. I feel like it's kind of important. I don't want to lose anybody. Uh, here we go. This is our position after b4 and after c4. Knight to b6 is definitely, I guess, the main line. There's not too, too many. There's like a dozen human games from this position. Um, actually staring at this with the mega database on, there's one game <laughs> that's been played from this position, but online... Um, just having played a few folks, this seems to be the well-established main line, knight to b6. And, uh, okay, so here, obviously, we were going to be playing pawn to d4. This was our original idea. And, inevitably, they will want to do something, because we're really pushing. We're, we're getting really serious here. So, black will play either d6 or d5. And here, there actually is a little bit of a difference, um... D6 is like clearly the only move. D5 here actually gets black into a lot of trouble because here we do not have to recapture. We can, and this might actually be okay for white. Um, it'll definitely transpose into the line where if black had played D6 and we just simply recapture, we'll be getting this line. But after D5, um, there is a little bit of a problem for black. And it's a move that we're going to be exploring in the, the second video. I'll spoil a little bit of how we got there, but you can get this amazing pawn structure after uh, pawn to c5, where um, black basically has to run away. But if they play knight to c4, which is what uh, I faced in one of my games that you're going to see coming up soon, here's how you get the fantastic pawn structure. You get here and you play d5. So more of this to come. But it's, uh, it suffices to say that white is virtually winning in this position. Um, you're absolutely crushing black. And we'll see this in a video coming up. So they essentially have to go back. And uh, I don't know what to say here. I will let you know that uh, there are actually... We'll, we'll talk about this now. I was just trying to determine in my own head if we should talk about this now or if this should wait for the second video. But I, 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 it's so good that I have to kind of share some of this with you. I will let you know, if you play e6 and you play knight to g5, you will win a lot of games really quickly. This is not correct by white, but I think I've won every single game I've played <laughs> with this. It will win. It's like not. Somehow black won't care. Even if you chuck h4, h5, it'll just play like g6, get this guy out. Somehow find a square for this guy, run the king this way. Computers won't care. They'll think that this is worse for you as white. I will let you know it will win. You'll win a lot of games fast, but I think you can play even better. There's no reason to go for the e6 line in this position because you actually have another amazing trap. And it's with this idea of playing pawn to a3 in this exact position. So here, if you look at this from black's point of view, the, the biggest problem is what do you do with this bishop on f8? Are you going to play e6, try to develop this way and get castled? 
Or are you going to play G6 and potentially always have to watch out for E6 stuff coming? Also, what are you going to do about this pawn? So there's a couple different things going on that our opponents actually have to juggle. And uh, the best move for black is actually to play E6. Um, but first, let's look at a couple of mistakes and get kind of an idea of some of the tactics and cool traps that do exist. Um, the main idea behind all of these, they're all kind of the same trap. If they take back on a3, you recapture with a knight. And the point is, if ever e6, this square is going to be very tender. The d6 square is where we want to, to get our knight. For example, if a6, which actually does not stop us from going here, we can simply get on with developing. And if ever e6, boop, we are hopping in. And if that knight reaches d6, it's basically lights out for black. This is going to be a huge threat. So this is one of the underlying tact uh, positional strategic ideas. I guess this isn't really a tactic. This is like a strategic idea in the position for white. Um, is Essentially, we're waiting. We want to recapture with the knight. And, we, and if ever e6, we want to hop into the d6 square. Uh, but there's a cool other tactic. Let's say black doesn't take back, right? Let's say black plays something like g6. Now we are going to recapture on b4. And this something like this actually happened in a lot of games that I played on the stream from which you're going to see a lot of these games. People were, for whatever reason, not recapturing this b-pawn in positions like this. They didn't all play g6. But in a position like this, black has to, has to, has to take this pawn. If they don't, uh, well, simply, if we get to keep this b-pawn, we're not even a pawn down. We have a huge space advantage and we should be able to just win cleanly. But if they take here, check out this trap. This one is really cool. And you can start it a couple different ways, um, but essentially we're going to at some point kick the knight. You can start with bishop to b5, you can start with bishop to d2. But the idea is after this knight ever hops back, uh, we want to play uh, bishop to d2. And the idea is if black is not careful, we will just win here on the spot. So if bishop to g7, we now have a really cool little tactic. So you can pause your video if you do want to try to discover this one on your own. Um, but we have a way of just winning a lot of material here. And it starts with removing this knight. And we're going to understand why the bishop is on d2 now. Because after this recapture, bishop to a5. And oh no, <laughs> the queen is basically smothered in here by all of her own pieces. Um, so there's no way to rescue the queen. You can attempt knight to b6, but here you can recapture. You can recapture either way. I kind of like exploiting the pin on the A file. And yeah, black is, is going down in flames here. So something like this is very possible. And it's the same motif if instead um, black does decide here now or later at some point to play uh, E6. We can get a very, very similar position after takes. Knight takes B4. Um, let's start with bishop d2 this time. And after they go back, we can play um, bishop to b5. This is kind of the same idea where if black plays a little bit too casually, it's the same idea. This blocks in a square from the queen. <laughs> so here we can just simply grab this knight, play bishop to a5 again, and boom, we are going to be winning a, a little bit more material. So this is one of the ideas black has to be aware of um, and kind of watch out for, but it, it could be <laughs> a very, very nasty trap. So, yeah, I mean, this is all kind of to say that it's not, not, not easy to play this at all with black. I think we'll leave the theoretical discussion here for now. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and maybe I can answer some of them. But uh, let's check out one game where we got a position very similar to this. And uh, I was able to, it was one of these kind of slow uh, build up sort of wins. So we'll check out this game and then we'll get to all the dramatic, exciting stuff in parts two or three. So do make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you know when it comes out. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy this very first game. All right, so we got a game. Grab Chio Michael. Let's see what we can do here. And yeah, J Theory coming in. This very well might be a beaver. And we're hoping to test out the new beaver. So this will be the brand new beaver. Knight to c6 is the line we're hoping to test. But really, if he plays anything else, I guess we'll take it from there. Yeah, knight c6. All right, and now knight f6 is the second most popular move. d5, also a move. But knight f6 will lead to a beaver-type gambit. And this will be the first time testing it out 
uh, against a viewer. So these streams are pretty fun. Usually as it goes along, <laughs> viewers start to come up with new ideas as we, we go along. But there are a few traps and pitfalls for Black right out of the opening. But again, as I've said, this is kind of, it's sort of improved over the original Beaver from the Black point of view. I think White's a little bit worse, but it's at least dangerous and tricky. So we will see what happens. So now you're on your own and we'll see what uh, Grabchio comes up with. Literally never played a Sicilian, but you're happy to lose some rating points. That's the attitude. Uh, I think it's fun just kind of getting out of your comfort zone just a little bit sometimes. And if you haven't played an opening, especially one like big, I feel like you really ought to. Everybody should play every opening a little bit because there's just structures and plans in the Sicilian that you're missing out on if you if you don't know. Hydrate. Oh, good. I got some tea. Thank you, Tim. And this is one of the big differences between this and uh, the original Beaver Gambit is that knight b6 is a perfectly fine move, whereas in the original beaver, where this pawn's already on e6, this knight kind of needs to go to the c7 square. And from here, this knight actually can be quite useful, uh, eyeballing the c4 pawn. So sometimes black gangs up on this c pawn, just something I need to be a little bit cautious with with white. I have not tried the new puzzle storm, the new Lee chess uh, thing. Uh, I haven't tried it yet. This is actually the best move, and I don't think anyone's ever played it on Lee Chess. There's a couple ideas, though. Uh, which one should we explore? Which one should we explore? Uh, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna take care. I think this is kind of a, a correct way of playing, and A3. So I'm sort of, I'm going for the correct way of playing with white. Tricks to come later. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I might need a beaverage. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh. Okay, this is a good move. Now, what's weird is very often it's in white's best interest to put this guy on the e2 square because this bishop to g4 is actually kind of an annoying idea. If I put this bishop on d3, bishop to g4 is often actually pretty decent for black. Nice try, nice try. Can't call me about work after work. Busy man. Got a stream for the people. Hey, it's Brian. What is up? And yeah. So this is very normal. So very often I just will be up. This is also a very good move uh, by the opponent. Opponent's playing well. What's the deal here? Okay, so there's a... There's a little girl up the stairs, and she is dragging something very loudly, very loudly across my floor. I'm sure you guys can't hear it, but it's very loud. <laughs> okay. Wow. I think this is all still some sort of prep, though. This this feels very much like Black is just playing all the best moves. Taking time, though, and that's kind of the point. Uh... The big thing in my favor is that if I'm already ready for these positions, it'll at least take the opponent a little bit of time to come up with something good. At least that's the hope. It's been a crazy month for me, too. Um, just every every day. I don't know why. It's not like... It's, I guess January... I guess it's normally a pretty busy month for me. But it's been unusually busy. <laughs> Blading Toast, finally catching a stream. Good to have you. Glad you were able to make it. So I got my pawn back, which actually makes me really happy. And I'm on this guy, and you know I also have knight c3 coming in. So this feels good. The the center here might come under fire. My d pawn seems safe enough. At some point, even if I somehow can't win this pawn, which I'm going to try to take with a knight. I think I'd rather take with a knight than a queen. I also have ideas of just blasting through on the queen side long term. So it feels very pleasant now that I got the pawn back. I'm doing viewer challenges. We're testing out the the brand new... I can take this one, too. The brand new Beaver Gambit. Oh, I could take with a knight. I put my knight right here. Man, so many good options, though. Yeah, I'm going to take here and try to get this knight installed on d6. Taking with the bishop also is probably fine. And now it's kind of falling apart because he lost this b-pawn 
D pawn is still under fire. Knight's hopping into D6. Looks like it's it's gone very well. And I kind of have more space on this side, so it's it's nice if I can break through over here. Just looking at the pawn structure is actually interesting because it's like it's me that gets all the extra space on the queen side. So it's kind of like where is black supposed to play? Is he meant to somehow go three on three on the king side or is he like what is he meant to do? So I think this actually this opening is a little bit tough because it's not easy to suggest a, a love all of your wild gambits, Jonathan. Hey, thanks, Jay Beast with the prime for two months. Very cool. I appreciate it. Um, and this beaver one, I, I'm telling you, it's been a massive point scorer for me. I'm a believer in the beaver. It's been, I just, that's the secret to getting your rating up is to play the beaver. Okay, again, big pin, so he's got to be careful. Uh, I could just take the pawn, but uh, maybe I'll take the bishop and then take this way. It's a very good knight, but these pawns are also very good. So I think I'm going to take this way, just take the bishop, take this guy back with my rook, uh, be up a couple pawns, and are these two very amazing, beautiful past pawns. Center still very solid. This pawn still under attack. So I guess now's probably the right time to take. Just double checking, making sure I'm not hanging anything. we got plenty of time. And uh, yeah, now we have a lot of lot of pass pawns, a lot of rooks hanging. And uh, and that's kind of the story of the beaver. The opponent actually played really, really well in the opening. So very good game to grab Chio, who, who played great. Uh, actually played like the computer for all of these moves. Like this, this is all like perfect play. This is perfect. Uh, I think even here, I think this all was was preparation. Um, and then here, I think you are, you are meant to like take back. Um, yeah, you have to play knight takes b4. If you let this pawn live, it's it's very dangerous. So you have to take, even though I'm going to be winning a little bit of time. Rook a4. I don't know if I would have played it. Queen b3 seems like normal enough to me. But somehow I'm going to be gaining some sort of initiative over on the queen side. And I'm a pawn down, but it's kind of like a banco. <laughs> In a sense, whenever you do these like b4, a3 gambits, you always can just say, hey, I got banco compensation here. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, if I get this pawn to live, my queen side play is just obviously very, very strong. So, very good game, though. You played the opening, actually, very well for not, for obviously not knowing it or being prepared for it. Very impressive. First showing.